realizing now that the reason I'm getting like you can't always see my eyes in the camera I don't know if anybody cares about this but my camera screen is at the top so of course you're gonna get some stuff from that and then also there has to be a way to get this to work but until then so hello welcome back to my channel my name is Isis and this is Isis says hi I can't believe I did all of that and I was looking at the viewfinder that's great I do a lot of research videos about topics that I think are really interesting and that matter to me and then also sometimes I vlog do random rambles as I like to call it about stuff that I think is really cool or important to me or that matters if you like any of that please feel free to subscribe and if you like this video during the middle of it as you're going through it please feel free to give it a thumbs up I also am still wearing this because I actually genuinely like how it just kind of pulls back my head so last week I talked about the adultification of black girls obviously there's no updates from there because it was just me kind of talking about adultification And then I think two weeks ago I had talked about the USPS. Not a whole bunch of things have been restored and if it has been restored it's the post office within that town that's restored itself. There was like a map that I saw on Twitter and I'm so upset that I can't find it anymore. It looks like the swing states are the ones that are actually going to be suffering the most. If you are in a swing state try your best to make other kinds of voting things that are outside of voting by mail. And of course yesterday the 22nd thank you ipad i think it was national voter registration day so hopefully you have been registered to vote that's all i have <music> So today we're going to be talking about the Supreme Court. This is mostly going to be focusing on the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm wearing the Reed merch. Shout out to the Reed. What a great podcast. Shout out to the Super Friends. I didn't need to do that. Anyways, so the U.S. Supreme Court is the highest court in the country, meaning that when the cases come to the Supreme Court, their decision isn't subject to any further review or appeal. Appeal essentially is there's a case that you get the ruling that is made as something that one of the other sides might not like, so they appeal, enter the case into a higher court to maybe get a different judging decision. That decision kind of supersedes the previous case ruling and it just kind of can keep going up up and up until it reaches the US Supreme Court but there is like reasons and ways that it can reach up there it's it's a great time this also means that the Supreme Court is the highest court in the judicial branch of government so for a quick civics lesson the government is divided into three branches so we have the judicial branch which is made up of the Supreme Court and lower courts their role is to interpret laws then you have the executive branch which is the president and the cabinet and whoever else they kind of choose or appoint they have people in their White House staff they have like the Secretary of State that's what makes up the executive branch truly there role is to kind of carry out the laws that are being made by the legislative branch which is the Senate and the House of Representatives and their role is to make laws. Supreme courts typically function as appellate courts. Appeal and appellate are kind of the same thing. Hearing appeals from decisions of lower trial courts or from intermediate level appellate courts. I think they mean like ninth circuit courts. Yeah no I was right. <laughs> Shout out to me, just knowing it off the back of my head, as if I wasn't researching this for hours. And the Supreme Court also has jurisdiction or authority on cases between state and nation, state and state, and government and citizen. And if necessary, the court has the power to check the actions of the other two branches of government. I thought that the idea of the Supreme Court was something that was taken from a different country and was just put into the US. It's actually not it. So the idea of the Supreme Court was created by the framers of the Constitution of the United States and was done while debating the division of powers between legislative and executive branches. And this was kind of a new concept to kind of create a whole court system and a whole judicial branch. In the English tradition, judicial matters had been treated as an aspect of royal or executive authority. The Supreme Court was not formally established until Congress passed the Judiciary Act in 1789. Even though the Constitution outlined the roles of the legislative and executive branches of government, it did not do the same for the judicial branch, leaving it to Congress to decide only that judicial power be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. So the Supreme Court was framed to be a last resort and an appellate body, which it still is, and was given the original authority 
authority to decide cases that fall under the Constitution, laws, or treaties of the United States, and cases where the United States is a party, involve disputes between states or citizens in different states, in cases of admiralty and maritime authority, in suits affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, and in cases where states are a party. I didn't realize that the reason that the Supreme Court is so weirdly political and partisan is because of how vague the framers left it and I didn't realize that that carried out throughout time. From 1789 to 1807, the court was made up of six justices, and in 1807, a seventh justice was added, followed by an eighth and a ninth in 1837, and then a tenth in 1863. The size of the court varies, but the size of the court is actually a political power move, and that sometimes can become law. So the first one was the Judiciary Act of 1801. This was the first example of a political party trying to shape the court. The Federalist-controlled Congress passed this act, reducing the number of Supreme Court justices by one whenever one of the justices left the court. So if a justice maybe dies or retires, their seat automatically is gone. The reduction of Supreme Court justices was intended to delay President Jefferson's chance to nominate someone to the court. Then there is the Judicial Circuits Act of 1866, and this was the only other time that the number of Supreme Court justices was changed. And actually, the proposal actually succeeded because we're going to talk about another one later. The act eliminated three seats from the Supreme Court, reversing the pending nomination of Henry Stanbury to the Supreme Court. Stanbury was the only justice nominated to the court by President Andrew Johnson. President Roosevelt also had a plan, which I, I find this hilarious that he thought it would actually work. He had the Judiciary Reorganization Bill of 1937. So this was done to fill the court with more justices favorable to the New Deal legislation. Roosevelt proposed appointing a new justice for every sitting justice over the age of 70. And that would actually mean that six justices would be added. Congress literally just ignored that sentiment that wasn't going to happen. And then later the reorganization bill was passed without the additional justice provision. This is just for fun, but I think it's really cool to talk about other countries and kind of what they're doing. So some countries have many Supreme Courts who have authority over certain cases. They keep saying jurisdiction, but jurisdiction is really just authority. So if I say jurisdiction, it's authority. If I say authority, it means jurisdiction. Have authority over certain cases restricted to particular areas of law. Some countries with a federal system of government may have a federal Supreme Court, like the Supreme Court of the United States, and member state Supreme Courts, like the states Supreme Court of Nevada. Nevada. The federal Supreme Court has a higher ruling over the member state Supreme Court. Federal law will always supersede or be above state and local law, but state and local law affects you more, so you better vote. Other countries like Canada may have a Supreme Court of general jurisdiction or authority, which means that they can make a ruling or decision over any question of law, which I find kind of hilarious, but you know, probably works way better. Other jurisdictions with a civil law system often have an order of administrative courts separate from the ordinary courts, headed by a supreme administrative court like the Supreme Administrative Court of Finland. A number of jurisdictions also have a separate constitutional court like Austria, France, Germany, Luxembourg, Portugal, Russia, Spain, and South Africa. In jurisdictions using a common law system, the doctrine of stare decisis, stare decisis applies the rulings made by Supreme Court as binding to all lower courts, meaning that that is the final decision. In civil law jurisdictions, stare decisis wouldn't be something that is actually as binding. It just represents what the main uniformed decision would be for any cases that are similar to that case, but lower courts can still kind of have a different decision. While the idea of the Supreme Court and the way that a lot of countries have their judicial systems now was inspired by the U.S. and is in other countries, the influence of the U.S. Supreme Court and their decisions has actually diminished over the last two decades. Fewer courts have actually referenced the US Supreme Court decisions, instead reference the European Court of Human Rights and other national Supreme Courts.
The Supreme Court is important because it rules on cases that affect our lives in so many ways. This goes from public school desegregation, to gay marriage, to health care, to affirmative action, to voting rights, and to free speech. The second point is that Supreme Court justices have a lifetime appointment, serving until death or retirement. They can be impeached, but this has only happened once. So because of this lifetime appointment, a justice can have a huge impact on the way that we exist in this country, depending on their rulings for a lot of decades, especially since they never really have to worry about running for re-election, meaning they don't have to think about public opinion when they make their decisions. And so they can impose a view that is very much not in agreement with the rest of the country. And again, that can have a lot of implications for a really, really long time until they maybe come upon the case again and change that ruling. Supreme Court and lower federal court appointments are made by the president, but they are also approved by the Senate. So it used to be that you needed 60 votes to be confirmed for these appointments. The Republican Senate changed the rules in April 2017 to require 51 Senate votes instead. So this was done mostly to confirm Justice Neil Gorish, Gorsuch when it was realized that Republicans would not be able to reach 60 Senate votes. We of course are going through a bit of a time right now. It is really important for us to know and understand what's going on in the country and understand the power that some of these institutions have. I didn't realize and didn't know how heavily political and then how actually tyrannical it can be when there are so many decisions left up to Congress or left up to secretaries of states, like the, of departments. And I mean, I knew the power of it, how intense that power would be. Your vote, particularly when we're talking about Congress and then when we're talking about state and local votes, those have such a heavy hitting impact on you compared to the president. These policies, these things that they're voting in and fighting for, like should not only affect a small number of people, but affect everybody as a whole and actually be for the better of everyone. As much as I love politics, reading about policies and programs, I also get just really sad <laughs> and just frustrated. I know that they want you to feel powerless. They want you to kind of give up and you shouldn't be giving up, but it also kind of feels like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> I mean, I always knew that black and brown, black, brown, queer folks and people in between have always in some way have been oppressed by this country. I didn't realize how much, how individualist people who are in the majority and are not within maybe any of these identity groups could be. If marginalized people are hurting, it is going to go up to people who are not marginalized. If you really are about equity and equality and protecting those who are the most vulnerable, examine your life. Are you actually being equitable? and a social justice warrior as you think you are. And I can tell you so many times in my life there were people who were not black and brown or queer who very much said that they were but their actions and their words and the way that they responded to me or somebody else was very much the opposite. Also examine why you have such a high need. This is very kind of weirdly off topic but it still applies. Examine why it's so much more interesting to do domestic missions that are not within where you live or international missions and why for some reason you can't connect that that oppression that you may see in those areas is just as much the same as where you are at home why you're not caring for them in the same way i know that being an advocate being intentional about listening to folks being intentional about your biases and your privileges and all of that i know it can be difficult and hard but being oppressed is even harder it has disappointed me and frustrated me at how much people can be incredibly ignorant of marginalized voices because it literally makes them have to think about not being selfish for five seconds. Are you questioning the institutions that you exist in? Making sure that they're actually as inclusive as they claim to be and not just posting a black square for the fun of it. I need there to be some more intention. It is ridiculous that we have to literally constantly yell at the top of our lungs for you to listen. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Bye.